In this lesson, we're going to talk about the different solvents that one could use to weld PVC pipe. Now, I definitely have my recommendation, and that's to use a purple primer with a blue wet or dry style of cement. Now, there's all kinds of things that happen out there and different types of products for different situations. Um, and in the irrigation field, I've seen a lot of different products used with different results. Now, when it comes to the primer, using a cleaner instead of a primer is seen all the time. I mean, I, I've seen so many examples to where a cleaner was used or the absence of a primer, and that doesn't provide the best bond that we can get for welding PVC together. What we're looking for is a chemical bond, and it seems to me from my experience and my observations that anything other than purple primer and either a blue wet or dry glue or a clear medium body or heavy body glue provides the chemical bond that it takes. Everything else, if you just use a blue glue and no primer or a clear glue with no primer or cleaner, then you're not going to end up with the chemical bond that we're after. More than likely, you're just going to end up with an adhesive bond, which is okay for a while. I've seen systems put in that were completely done with no primer whatsoever, and then say 13, 15 years later, the whole system starts pulling apart at the joints. Okay, I've got an example here of what I'm talking about, and this is an example to where there was blue glue used, but no primer. And let's see what happens, is this joint just pulled right apart. Um, and so obviously this is on the pressure side, so this caused a big problem for my client, but if they had just done the job properly to begin with and used a purple primer, this probably would have never happened. Um, and it's rare that you see people that use blue glue and no primer. Normally it's a clear glue um, with either the clear cleaner um, and or no primer at all. And it's hard to tell whether they use a cleaner because the product is clear. So it's kind of hard to tell, but I know from experience what I've seen and what works out there in the field and what lasts over time. If you're trying to use a cleaner, and some people <clears throat> I've seen even use a three-step process to where they'll use a cleaner, then primer, and then the glue. Now, my recommendation is just take a rag and just wipe off the surface really good that you're going to be uh, gluing or welding. And that with the primer provides a good enough cleaning so that you shouldn't have any uh, debris or particles of anything left. Because anything that is on the surface here um, can interfere with the weld that you're making. So we don't want any grit or sand or dirt or anything else or even shavings of the PVC to end up in this joint. So what we want to do is make sure that we wipe everything off good and use our primer. So we're going to talk a little bit later about some of the techniques that we're going to use. Um, but now let's talk about the actual primer itself. There are other choices available out there as far as products that come before the glue, and you'll find some different recommendations depending on the application that you use. There are cleaners, there are primers, there's you know different products for industrial grade applications. Just make sure that what you're choosing is for PVC. And I, I like the visual aspect of the purple so that you can tell what you've done and what you've not done. Now, you really only should be, if you're um, installing a system or you're working through a repair, you probably should just work on one joint at a time. But if you're in a situation and you're going for speed or whatever and you prime all the things up and then you're putting it together and gluing it as you go, the purple, the stain from the purple on the pipe gives you that visual indicator that yes, you've already primed that. I, you know, in the old days when I used to uh, use a little bit of cleaner, you'd clean something off and then go to glue it and look back and go, uh, what have I done? What have I cleaned? At the time, I thought that the cleaner was an adequate product, but, you know, 12 years of experience has showed me that that's not an adequate product. We should be using the purple primer. So, what we don't want is any pinhole leaks or any softening up of the pipe surrounding the weld. So just make sure that you're um, being very careful and deliberate and not slinging primer all over the place. Here's an experiment that you can do is take a piece of PVC 
and take your fingernail and see if you can scrape any of that PVC away. Not possible. It's a hard product. But take some of this purple primer and uh, let it sit there for just a minute and then take your fingernail and you can scrape away the outside surface of that PVC. So it softens it up. So we only want this primer going exactly where we place it, not running down the inside of the pipe and not dripping onto other uh, joints that may ha we may have welded um, if we're doing an installation or if we're repairing over top of other pipes or other situations there. We don't want that primer to drip down onto the glue because you can take, I don't know if you can see it here in the video, but on this uh, pipe, whoever put this together was kind of sloppy and there's little bits of, of PVC that are dotted around here on the pipe. And if you were needing to cut this, and repair at that point, you can take this primer and it'll actually take the dried glue off of here. So we know that it will um, compromise glue so we don't want a lot of excess primer floating around out here or being slung over everything else. Now what the manufacturers recommend if you read on the, the back of the product itself is they recommend that you do the gluing while the primer is still wet. They want you to put the primer on and then immediately put the glue on afterwards. Now, far be it from me to disagree with the manufacturer. What I'm teaching you is what my personal experience has been, okay? So in light of the fact that the glue can dilute the, the excuse me, the primer can dilute the glue, we don't want a lot of excess primer on here, and I personally prefer for the primer to be completely dry. And one of the problems is that when you prime the surface, a lot of times you can end up with a couple of blobs or drips down here, and then when you go to put the glue on, it can um, dilute that glue down. Now, there are some old school plumbers who mix the primer and the glue together and use them as one product. I'm not going to recommend that. <clears throat> Maybe it's work for those guys. And there are also some other products out there that have a glue and a primer mixed. So maybe that indicates that it's an acceptable solution. But I'm here to teach you the very best um, activities that produce the very best long-lasting results that we can possibly get. So uh, I'm going to teach you the rules and then if you want to bend or break those rules later, that's on you. Uh, you have to decide in your business what things that you're going to do, the things that you're going to take the time to make sure that you're doing properly so that you're not having to go back later and redo those things. And that's the reason I'm giving you this information here from years of experience. I want you not to do what's the most economical, um, what's the quickest. I want you to do what's the best. And that way, if you're not having to go back and redo things, if your first job stays good the first time every time, then that's going to be the most economical, time-saving practice that you can um, incorporate into your business. So let's talk a little bit about the glue that we use. Um, there's all kinds of different manufacturers of the, the blue wet or, try, uh, wet or dry type of product. Um, you have Odie, you have Christie's, you have uh, Lasgo, you have um, Spears uh, is the product that I have here. And I also have a can of Christie's. And this is a, a quart size. And this is a, a pint size of uh, primer. And you can also get even a smaller uh, version of this for, you know, um, smaller repairs. And the difference is not only in the quantity that you get, you'll also get a different size of dauber down in here. Okay, so I don't know if I can get this one open or not, but we're going to take a look here just real quick. Uh, this is a large size dauber, okay? So, and you can see that it drips stuff all over the place. And the only time I like this large size dauber, um, and we're going to take a look right here at a picture of the two different sizes that you can get in the cans. I like to use the smaller dauber in sizes up to one inch or one and a quarter inch. And then above that, let's say inch and a half pipe on up, I like the larger dauber because it gets enough on it to where you can go all the way around and make sure that you're getting a good complete weld when you put this together. So I'm going to give you a couple of facts on Odie's Rain or Shine Blue Cement. Just one of many products out there. I like Odie just the same as everybody else. It does a fantastic job. 
Now, if you look at the instructions on the back, it's going to tell you how long you should let that glue sit. Okay, for the immediate bond, you need to give it a couple of minutes for it to set up. But for you to attain what's called the lap shear strength, that's going to mean that you need to leave that setting for two hours before you put water pressure back on it. There are other situations if it's a very tricky repair um, and there's really only space to do it once and do it well, I like to leave that glue to sit overnight if I can just to make sure that it is properly cured and hardened. You don't want to get into a, a tricky, tricky repair and then just go throw the water back on it uh, immediately you're going to end up with leaks. I mean, it may be okay the minute that you look, but that water pressure will pierce improperly cured glue and form little pinholes. I see people all the time that get in a hurry. There was a guy that used to work for me and his previous employer's standard was to put the glue on, make the fitting, smoke a cigarette, turn the water back on, and you're good to go. And so this technician was always wondering, why his repairs kept blowing out. So obviously my, my advice is you're not giving it enough time to set up. So that's really, you know, two hours is the recommended um, minimum to get the lap shear strength. And really what that means is just a, a fully hardened joint. And that's what we're after here is just the very best possible chemical solvent weld that we can get. And when we go to glue, it's important that we know um, some proper gluing techniques, okay? So when you go to put, a, put the glue on the pipe here and you put your dauber on it, um, we're in, we'll put the fitting together. One thing that we're gonna wanna do is to take our rag and wipe up the excess. Okay, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. I'm gonna go through a dry run of a, uh, a joint weld, and then I'm gonna show you some videos of some actual stuff happened out there in the field. I ain't gonna do it here in the studio because of the vapors from these products. And that brings me to the point about safety with this stuff. Um, these are, are uh, very hazardous chemicals, um, and they even say on the back that they contain suspected possible carcinogens. And what a carcinogen is, is a known cancer-causing um, chemical or product. So we don't want to be breathing these vapors in. And as we use them, we're going to try to keep them off of our hands as best as we can. And that means a very deliberate gluing process. You can wear gloves. I, I find it hard to wear gloves. Um, if you use the latex gloves like a doctor wears or whatever, the primer will immediately eat right through it and it'll be done. So, uh, I mean, maybe you can keep it off your fingers for a minute or two with that. And if you're only doing a couple of quick things, that might be okay. But when you're working with pipe and you're fitting things together and gluing and priming and all this, I, I just find it hard to do with any type of glove on it just the, the pipe slips through your hand you don't get a good grip and force these pipes down into the socket like they need to be so work out the best thing that works for you there as far as keeping this stuff off of your hands and definitely don't be breathing these vapors in if you have to work underneath a house or in an enclosed space you better do something to get some ventilation in there and get those vapors away from you because it's not good, and it's really the safety aspect of this. You know, we want to be around long term, so we don't want to be getting any lung cancer or just whatever it is that these suspected possible carcinogens can do to you. I've seen um, reports saying that once it gets into your skin, the primer, um, it goes straight to your liver. So I'm not a doctor and I ain't going to make any claims about that, um, but just do your research. And if you deal with this product every day, uh, it definitely behooves you to be very careful and deliberate about what you're doing and not to uh, ride around in your truck with these things in the passenger cab with you. Put them either in the back of the truck or uh, wherever else or seal them up with a plastic bag or something else. You don't want to be breathing these vapors. So I think that's about all I'm going to say about that. And now we're going to go on to the next lesson and we're going to talk about how to actually solvent weld this product together.